Hi there, yogis. I'm Allison Wesley, and today we're going to work with variations of bridge pose. And primarily, we'll focus on the action of the pelvis in bridge pose. This can be a huge helper to your pose or a huge inhibitor. So the way I'm going to invite you to see the pelvis is as though a ball, right? A ball would rotate on an axis. So one of the issues um, with bridge pose and, and really with many back bends is that we tend to just jut the pelvis forward, right? It makes us think we're going back in space and it makes us think we're doing a back bend if we just sort of like squeeze our glutes, thrust our pelvis forward and that takes our spine back. But in that case, it really can pinch the lower back and it um, doesn't do much to actually get a back bend at all. So what we're gonna work with is trying to imagine, and you can do this with me standing. So I'm gonna bend my knees a little bit. And first I'm gonna make sure that I'm not already in a pelvic thrust. So I'm gonna bring my pelvis just kind of back so it's above my heels or above my ankles. Um, I'm gonna get a sense of the kind of the center place between front and back on the body. And you can usually kind of feel the um, place where the, the femur pokes out. It's the greater trochanter. So you might even take your fingers or hands to both sides. And so just like a ball would rotate on its axis without really coming forward or back in space, this is the image that we'll use with the pelvis. Okay. So you can keep your fingers there, bend your knees, and imagine that that ball is rotating back and that ball is rotating forward. Right. And if you're really familiar with pelvic tilts, you've probably heard all the other images for this, right? We have like pelvic bowl, so people will imagine this is a bowl of water that's spilling back, or a bowl of water that's spinning forward. Right. So we're just trying to get a sense of, can I rotate my pelvis under and back without a lot of shifting forward and back in space. Right. So that's kind of ingredient number one. Now we're gonna keep that going. We're gonna imagine that we're, um, let's see if we can imagine that we're doing this from some of the muscles of the front and the back. Right. So I'm gonna imagine that when I'm rotating the ball of my pelvis backward, that I'm bringing my pubic bones closer toward the front of my spine. And then when I switch that up, I'm gonna imagine I'm bringing the tailbone a little bit closer to the back of the spine, right? So it's kind of this pulley system between front and back, right? So we're kind of rotating from pubic bone toward front of spine, tailbone toward back of spine. Keep it going. I'm going to give you one more image that might be helpful. And this is if you can sense your sitting bones, so the, the base of the pelvis, the bones that you would feel on a chair if you were sitting on a chair, you can imagine that they have cables on them that go down toward the backs of the knees. So that when you bring your bowl or your ball back, you can imagine you're doing so via the cables, drawing the sitting bones toward the backs of the knees. And I like to imagine that those cables are just releasing some of the action and then the pelvis comes back. So it's like the cables are being drawn down toward the backs of the knees and then we'll release. Let's do a few more and see if you can just explore this action, being able to rotate the pelvis versus just clenching your glutes or versus just thrusting, thrusting your pelvis forward or back. Okay. Now, in terms of language, when we get to bridge, when I say pelvis rotating back, I'm referring to that ball or that bowl. So this is the same thing as sitting bones being drawn toward the backs of your knees. It's the same thing as pubic bones being drawn toward the front of the spine. It's the th same thing as the bowl of water spilling back. Okay, so that's the one we're gonna try to access when we get to bridge. Um, let's come down onto our backs and you'll see that I have a couple blocks on hand. You don't need them, but I find that it helps a lot with this next exercise. So if you do have blocks or something similar, you can place them down so that they are um, ready to go kind of right underneath the heel pad of your foot. So I'm going to come down to my side first, then I'm going to land to my back and I'm going to try to position my feet 
so that it's just the heel pad kind of hooking onto the edge of the block. This is so that when I push my feet, so I don't lose the blocks. Right? Also, you might make sure you're on a sticky mat or else you will lose the blocks. Okay, now once again, here I am, I'm gonna rest the legs. Ideally, they're relatively above the hips so that I can be pretty relaxed through the fronts of my hips. And I'll take a few more rounds of the pelvic tilt. So I can imagine that bowl or that ball spinning on its axis, spinning forward. And I can imagine that bowl or ball spinning back. Of course, you can add breath. So you might inhale as that bowl spills forward. And exhale as that bowl spins back. Now continue this motion, and once again, the subtlety that we're looking for is being able to rotate the pelvis back without any clench to the glutes. So obviously the muscles of your glutes are gonna help you do this, right? but we're trying to avoid any sort of hardening or squeeze or grip. We wanna feel that there's this really balanced action of rotation through the pelvis. The last piece I'll point out before we add this into a rolling bridge is what's happening in the ribs and the spine. Right? Pelvis is attached to the spine. So as you rotate your pelvis, your spine will also move. But there's a difference, and I'll do my best to show you. I'll take my arms out of the equation. There's a difference between me moving my pelvis from my ribs or from my lower back right, versus letting my pelvis move and allowing that to maybe move my spine and my ribs. Okay. So once you have this and you feel like, oh yeah, when I come back and I'm rotating the bowl back, I get this hollowing of the breath, this kind of emptying of the breath. There's no clench or grip in the glutes or in the abdominals. Okay. And yeah, when I come forward, I can feel that expanse. It creates a wave through the spine. Once you have all that, you can add in the rolling bridge. And we're using the blocks just to give ourselves a little bit more leverage. So I would start with the rotating back of the pelvis. I'm not coming to my maximum, I'm just coming to the gentlest little tilt back. Okay. Now from there, I'm gonna slowly peel up and I'm gonna imagine my tailbone is lifting, each vertebra of the spine is lifting. I'm gonna attempt to keep my shoulders on the floor. And then I'll wave back down as if from the, the upper to the middle, to the lower spine, eventually back down to the pelvis. And once you land, continue that pelvic tilt and allow that bowl to spill forward. So it's kind of like four parts of movement. The first part is the rotating back in space of the pelvis. Second part is the peeling up and the waving up of your spine. The third part is the waving back down. And fourth part is completing that, allowing the last piece of the pelvic tilt, the tipping forward. Now continue this, of course you can add breath. So I like to inhale on the way up, Exhale on the way down. And then I add a breath for the pelvic piece. So the inhale to tilt the pelvis forward. The exhale to tilt the pelvis back. And then the inhale to peel up. And as you continue, I'll just give you some more um, sort of ideas of places to bring your attention. So we talked about this a little bit before about keeping the shoulders pretty relaxed, especially on the way down. That's something I'm really concentrating on. The other piece is not lifting to your maximum. If you try to get high up, it could so easily become a clinch. Right? And then we've lost the ability to actually move and roll through the spine. So give yourself permission to maybe lift 
I don't know, 60, 70% of what you could do. You can also come back to the imagery we practiced before of the cables. So my sitting bones, as I lift, are being drawn toward the backs of my knees. And then as you roll back down, you might imagine that that cable is being lengthened slowly as you lower. Let's take one more round. The spine loves this. It's getting to move segmentally and as a piece, as a whole. Now when you do come down and rest, give yourself that signal to really let go before you do anything else. So relax the muscles that helped you lift, take a beat there, and then you can take your knees into your hands. And a nice counter to this, you can just hold on to your knees. Imagine the legs are really relaxed. And you're just going to circle the knees with your hands outward and toward each other. Do it a couple times in one direction. And then revolve in the opposite direction. This is a pretty good practice as is. Um, if you'd like to continue on. You're welcome to watch another video. Um, this might have been a good warm-up for you if you'd like to then come into some work with um, maybe a backbend flow. I have a Cobra video that's pretty nice. Um, if this is it for you, do take a moment to sit and just acknowledge and feel the effects of the practice. Your spine will hopefully feel a little bit more kind of refreshed, energized. I'm feeling a bit taller. So enjoy that. Thank you for practicing. See you soon. Namaste.